Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Stanley IHTC B199 SRS 5x4.5 US 32D. Here's what that hinge looks like, everything I just said. Um, it's a it's a somewhat unusual hinge uh, in the sense that it has a number of features, a few features to it that renders it, oh, that's not your typical hinge. Uh, and we're going to talk about what all of those features are uh, in a moment. This is a concealed bearing hinge. It will look, I suppose, like it's plain bearing, but it's anything but. This is a concealed bearing hinge, which, mean, which means it's certainly intended to handle a much heavier weight than standard. Let's take some dimensions. This is a five by four and a half which means the height is five inch tall and the width is four and a half inch, okay, as we can see there. The thickness ought to be 0 0.190. Let's take a look at that. Okay, and this being a five inch tall hinge and it happens to be heavyweight, which is inferred in the part number, it should be 0 0.190 and according to my caliper, it's a bit shy on that. Yeah, 185 thousandths, which isn't really shy on that. It's just the back of the, the plate is not perfectly flat. It's 183, 183, so nominally 190 thousandths. And that means that it's heavyweight, okay? What does heavyweight mean? Well, it's a thicker hinge leaf. A five inch and a standard weight would be about 140 thousandths. Now, what is this hinge used for? Why would you be looking at it and preview that a bit? We've got some studs on the back there. Let's take a closer look in terms of where you'll use this hinge. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Why are you looking at this hinge? Well, you might just want one heck of a robust hinge, and what I mean by that is it's going to be 5 inch tall. It's going to be heavyweight. It's going to be non-ferrous base material. This is solid stainless steel. Not unusual for stainless to be marginally magnetic when it's been machined or worked, and it, yeah, it's not unusual, you know, passivity might be the right term for that, but it picks up some properties, type 304 anyway, picks up some magnetic property. 316 doesn't, uh, to any perceptible level that I'm aware of. So, five inch tall, heavyweight, solid stainless. What that tells me, before we even get into this weird treatment to the hinge knuckle and this pair of weird pieces of material on the back, that you have a very heavy door, a high volume door, an exterior door. Something that's used a lot, maybe wider than, or three foot six and wider, which is where the five inch is gonna come in. That additional half inch from four and a half to five gives you about an extra 20% in efficiency of carrying the door in terms of just the load. Um, High free, um, heavyweight uh, hinge goes along with the confluence of wider 363840 and high use, high volume on the door. Okay, um, the stainless base material that's probably going to be because it's an application where you can't have any rust. Where I have seen this hinge without this hinge tre uh, tip treatment is on the doors going from the American terminal out to the parking garage in the Miami International Airport. They have security studs that are there uh, on those hinges, and I know that because other manufacturers have a different way of doing it, and I could see the evidence of that. So that's what this is. That's a security stud. So you might have an exterior door that swings out, or you have, speaking of the airport, you might have an application where you can't have any tampering that's going on. So when the door is closed, if this were to be a standard hinge and you could drive that pin out, which you cannot with this sort of treatment, there's no such thing as a non-removable pin option for this type of hinge because when they prep this, and I'll talk about it in a moment, there's the, the, the pin is completely captured. There's no way to remove that. If you were to able to remove or drive the pin out, you still could not pull the door out of the frame because these leaves have these security studs. One is going into the frame plate and the other is going into the door plate. You can't spread the door and frame out that much to separate these knuckles, to ma physically make those knuckles move out far enough where you could separate it. And even if you did, 
you know, you're not, I would imagine you can't. It's just, it's just too thick. Um, so that's what those security studs are. They're a concealed, very effective way to work towards eliminating the possibility of pulling the door out of the frame. If you have a high security application, or again, the airport, a jetway, you can't have people coming in from the outside uh, at all. And that's why that's there. I thought it was odd to see it in the exterior doors to a parking garage, but I don't know the codes or requirements. I don't know the codes that would govern that, which there wouldn't be any code, I don't think. I don't know the requirements of the airport. They may say, we want to be able to lock this airport down, which kind of makes sense, right? And uh, security studs would be typical on an application like that. Now, this is what they call an institutional tip. Okay. Now, it's also known as a hospital tip. And the purpose of this is to prevent someone from hanging something on this. And maybe it's a very indelicate word to use, but propping something up using this as a ledge by which to allow something to dangle from, maybe another indelicate term, is, is all but prevented by this sloped sort of hinge. Any weight on there forces that to slide off. It's ligature resistant in that regard, and you will see this in mental health care installations, hospitals, you'll see hospital tips. They're also nice because they're cleaner, they're more sanitary in the sense that there's no nooks and crannies inside of here for this to get dirty. That's been complete, that pin is inside of there, that's been completely welded shut. Uh, yeah, I would say it's been welded, it's been ground down and welded shut would be my guess. Um, so inherently the hospital tip comes with that increased security aspect to it because the pin can't be driven out, okay? You got leaves that can't be separated because you got security studs, you've got a pin that can't be driven out. If it's an outswing door, very high security, you're going to want to think about exactly this type of hinge. Um, if it's an in-swing door, you can't get to the hinges, so you know you might need hospital tips like you would in patient care, patient rooms and hospitals, but I couldn't argue that you need security studs because it's a not insignificant upcharge um, is what this is. So the dissecting the part number, IHT, institutional hospital tip, is what I would call that, this feature. Uh, C, C, B means concealed bearing a very friction reducing sort of construction and design in this five knuckle hinge. The 199, it means two things, heavyweight and non-ferrous base material. This happens to be 32D, so it's stainless steel. If I were to have a, B, a CB199 and it was 613 finish, it would be made of bronze, a non-ferrous base material. In no instance would it ever be made of steel because that would be a CB168, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that's what that would be, okay? Welded feature here. This is, um, I've actually seen hinges that were so stressed that the knuckles started to actually open up because it was so hyper extended or hyper damaged. Um, that's really not gonna be the case with this hinge because it's been welded closed. You know, all these features on this hinge really are what serve to drive the cost of such a hinge. Um, to even prove how this is so intended for the security market, here's your fastener package. What you don't see is that all of these screws are pin torques, machine screws and wood screws. They're all pin torques. Okay. I don't know what size, T25 if I was gonna guess, that'd be the first one I'd put in there. Don't quote me, but it's, it's in that range. Um, so let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look at a whole mess of supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, here is the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at the extended description information. Specially designed for detention facilities. Hospital tip. Sloped ends deter hangings, shore, ligature resistant. Full mortise. It is indeed a full mortise hinge. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, stainless steel base, the gauge, heavyweight, five knuckle, concealed bearing. Shear resistant stud is what SRS stands for. With 
stands 200 foot pound of a ram test. That's one heck of a hinge. Dimensionally consistent. Um, I'll show you what that means, I think. Keeps hinge in position even when all the screws break under attack. Studs engage into door and frame. So here are some images. Let's take a look at them. Consistent look. Yeah, you know, if you imagine this is the outside. It's a clean look, even though it's still five knuckle. That's what full mortise means. You can see from the bend or what we call the swag on the hinge leaf here, that bend is what makes this full mortise. These little um, voids or pinholes in, in the tells me that this has been welded by hand or it's been welded. Sorry about that. Uh, the security studs on the back, shear resistant studs they're called. Hospital tip is here or institutional tip. Stanley does make practice of stamping the back of their hinge. Most of them, I can't say all, but most. It's nice to be able to look at the back of the hinge and know what it is. There's the shear resistant stud. No evidence of that stud on this side. Um, this is a Stanley hinge. Well, a year or two ago, 2019, 2020, I had been told that they were going to rebrand Stanley to Best, Best Lock. And I thought, well, okay. I mean, Best is a, certainly a good name, but I don't think of Best when it comes to hinges. I didn't understand, I do not understand the marketing change, but nonetheless, um, if you're ordering a Stanley hinge, it's going to be called Best, at least at this time, until someone decides to change it again. Shows bit of a close-up of the weld. It's a good clean weld and the brush that's on the solid stainless. And then your screw package. You can kind of see the pin torques that's there. All right. Okay, now, um, so that talks about the extended description. A couple of cut sheets are down below. First of all, there's the SRS cut sheet that just shows what the shear resistant stud is all about. Optional feature for prison hinges. Dimensionally consistent. Keeps hinge in position even if all screws break. Specify SRS. Studs engage into door and frame. There is also the security stud. So what happens with the security stud? Same, well, not same concept, but a similar concept in the sense that there's a stud that literally seats into a hole in the other leaf. You can certainly see how that would substantially improve the security over an opening but you will possibly see security stud and NRP on the same hinge. Okay. Now, there is another component I wanted to point out. This is a five by four and a half. Okay, it's not five by five, it's five by four and a half. The logic there is that your application doesn't call for a five inch wide hinge. And what we're trying to do is to keep the vertical axis of pivoting as close to the center of the thickness of the door as possible, because that's a more economical way for the hinge to be able to do its job. You move that vertical axis of pivoting out further, and you do get into a situation where the hinge is simply less capable of doing its job. So that hinge, you know, you want that vertical axis of pivoting towards the center of the thickness as best as possible. It's an awful drawing. You want that tucked back this way. So you might want to also talk about how, how to determine the width of a hinge because if you have an application like this, your door sits here it'll go to 180 degrees. You don't need a special wide hinge. Well, what if I had an inch of drive it there and you wanted the door to go to 180 degrees? Now you need to calculate what's going on there, or maybe your inset was greater. And that's door thickness minus hinge back set. Hinge back set is the amount of the door here that's not been 
cut away or that dimension that's remaining times two plus your inset and inset is this dimension from the face of the door to the face the face of the frame to the face of the door that's going to be very small like an eighth of an inch or less or it could be a very large dimension nonetheless you need to calculate what the inset is plus inset plus clearance this is clearance how much trim do you need to get around whether it be brick mold or drive it or whatever the case is that's going to tell you the width of the hinge inch and three quarter minus quarter times two is three inch let's say an eighth of an inch here so three and an eighth you have no clearance that you need to get around because it's like this you go to the next widest commercially available hinge technically this formula would tell you a five by four inch let's say that you now have half inch casing out here then you're going to be at three and five eighths you're still okay four inch wide hinge okay but that's the formula by which you determine that and that's in the Stanley catalog as well so let me show you the cut sheet that we have I have a template let's look at that first yeah this is a template this is going to serve as a way by which for you to know where the hinge screw holes are located uh, in the hinge leaf we'll also tell you the F dimension which is the leaf to swag line some people literally want to know what's that dimension of the leaf well Stanley gives it to us so on a five by four and a half it's going to be 1 in 23 30 seconds. Now there is a cut sheet that we have as well. Let me pull that up. And here it is. It'll be linked here. And this goes over everything that we've just discussed. Most importantly, it shows you the sizes that this hinge is available in. They won't do it in a 5 by 4 So you would go with the smallest width that your formula determines. Let me show you uh, in the Stanley catalog where, what that formula looks like. Here it is. For hinge width formula, refer to page 7. Let's go to page 7. There we go. Door thickness minus back set times 2. There is the formula that I just went through. That shows you what it all looks like. Okay. All of that's in the Stanley catalog. Now with the Stanley catalog, I'll show you where that's located. There is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page and when you click on that you can pull up not only all of the Stanley products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation but also a link to the manufacturer's website as seen here as well as a link to that full catalog and the one that I'm using is the 2010 architectural hardware catalog. They have a detention brochure as well here. Uh, and if you're looking at such massive hinges, you might want to look at this uh, catalog as well um, because they are listed here. These are under the detention category. You might want to take a peek at some of these other pretty epic hinges in terms of weight. I have people that aren't doing detention work. They're, they're mill workers, but they're hanging a thousand pound wood and steel structure door so they're looking for really epic hinges so we routinely get into these types of catalogs looking for hanging solutions when a client can't or doesn't want to use a pivot so let's wrap up this video on camera now in conclusion I don't recommend using this hinge just casually they're extremely expensive but if you've got a door that you feel you might be under physical attack to get into um, or some attempt to break in, you're going to want to throw everything you can on a hinge like this. I can tell you, I've been on the wrong side of a locked door, locked myself out, and it just had NRP. And I find I found it next to impossible to drive that pin out without, without doing damage to the surrounding door, the frame, the paint, the hinge, the hardware itself. Um, and the, the point of me saying that is I, learn, I have learned firsthand how extremely effective security devices are on hinges. Um, how far you need to take that NRP or maybe a welded pin or a um, security stud or a shear resistant stud application you know, is really up to you. Um, 
but if it's an application like detention work or something in that nature, you probably won't be the only person making that decision in terms of what should be used. Um, there's ultimately no harm in throwing security studs or shear resistance studs on something with the exception of, well, I've got 50 openings. Well, now you've got a large number that you need to add when it may not be required. And obviously in swinging doors, I couldn't argue that you would use those. I'm extremely partial when it comes to Stanley. I'm a, a massive fan of their, of their quality, their fit and finish. Their hinges just look nice when they show up. The leaves swing very well. As soon as you take them out, you can just swing them back and forth. Other manufacturers' hinges really require a load on that hinge leaf. Um, their material is made in Asia, so much of what they do is going to have a lead time if it's not in stock. The regular culprits are going to be in stock. Your FBB 199s, your F or FB 199s, your FB 179s. These these hinges are in stock. But you get into to detention work like this, there's going to be a lead time. So please plan accordingly. Any questions on this or any other Stanley product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.